chum and bring that latex come on and bring that alley more fan bring all your makeup too cause halloween is coming halloween is coming and we know what to do Halloween is upon us! <laughs> this tutorial requires intermediate skills, takes about one hour to prep that prosthetic and then the paint job is up to you. It's either one hour, two hours or three, depending on how detailed you want to do it. It only takes about 20 minutes to apply and the money we spent went into that styrofoam wig head. Quite an investment since you can reuse it. Since this styrofoam head is a bit smaller than our actual head, we need to extend it a bit so that our mask creation isn't too tight when we peel it off. You can basically use any old clay here to extend it or tape on some aluminium foil extensions there. If you can't get your hands on a styrofoam face, you can always use something round, fairly the shape of your head and build on that. With the extensions in place, we mix up liquid latex with baking flour. Add a little flour at a time, mix it very well and then you have a gooey, nice latex paste, just like this. We smear it onto our head and start creating the upper part of the mask. To make it easier to work with this latex paste, we add a little bit of liquid latex to our fingers as we begin to smooth it out. That way, that latex won't stick to your fingers. It'll just flow smoothly along the paste. Of course, find yourself a nice reference image of a pumpkin, unless you want to use ours. We were inspired by Immortal Mask's awesome creation. And a word of advice, make sure that head has proper support or you will, yeah, have a little accident. This actually fell down to the floor as well when it was drying. So just make sure you put it where it can't tip over. With the lower part of the face in place, we need to create those jagged teeth. And we're using a spatula here, scooping out those sharp teeth, just like that. And at this stage, you don't have to create the teeth super detailed because we are gonna create the upper jaw as well with the overlapping teeth there going in between the lower ones. So scoop out what you can there and apply that big chunk of latex paste above. Define the jawline, smooth everything out gently like that. And now we can start carving out those teeth in more detail. And of course when doing this it's equally important that you dip that spatula or tool you're using in liquid latex. Makes it a lot easier to shape without it getting stuck there. So it's carving out, then smoothing a little, then carving out more and the teeth will start to build up. And this being a pumpkin, we of course need to extend those lines of the teeth to go all the way down, just like that. And for our nose, we're going for a basic human nose, skeleton nose, that is. I like to mess around with latex paste in Swedish is... Jo gillar att klara runt med latex pasta. 
with that nose in place, we continue with those furrows. We need some running up there from our eye all the way up to the center of our head. And all those lines will of course converge there at the top where we will add our little stem shortly. And then we need to add a little bit of texture there on the lower part of that eye socket, roughing it up. Then we bring out a toilet roll like this, cut off a tiny piece there, a few centimeters, or however long you want your stem. And then we simply fold it up here, wrinkle it like this, and smack it straight into that latex paste. It might be looking crude right now, but this will be detailed with additional glue there to give it the right kind of texture. Need the base there, smooth it out and get back there in with those furrows. Leaving the top, heading down to the brows. We need a bit of an angry look here, so we push in the brow area here. Yeah, adding to that angry, evil look. Then it's time to leave it to dry and we suggest you leave it for two days, just to make sure it's dry. <laughs> the shout goes to Illumin RT. Funny name there, Tiffany. Anyways, go check out her amazing creation. This is colorful, it's magic, it's fantasy. Check it out! Back with a dry prosthetic and we continue to add details to the stem using a glue gun. You can use any kind of old glue, just add strings of glue like that shove down some paper or in this case a makeup sponge there on the top to fill it out and add a little bit of glue along the edges. Stem complete, fantastic! However the pumpkin looks really smooth so let's add some of those classic warts on it as well to keep it natural. Next up, coloring time, and of course the base is orange, so we mix up some red and some yellow here. Grease-based colors, you can use whatever colors you have to achieve this orange tone. We change this up a little as we go along here painting, so we get a nice mix there, so it's not gonna be flat orange. This is just the base coat, all the detailing is gonna go above it. But of course, some color shifting there in that base coat will make for a much more natural look. Switching to our alcohol activated colors for the details. Again, use what colors you have. Doesn't necessarily have to be alcohol activated because we are gonna set this whole creation with a layer of varnish later on. You are free to paint this any way you like, but we are going with darker tones there in all those crevices and furrows and cracks all over the place. Starting with a light brown, slightly darker tone, then going in with a much darker, more rust-like. But by all means, create a pink pumpkin. That might be the next trend for Halloween. Who knows? And this process is all about layers and blending things out nicely. We began with the orange base, then a slightly darker brown tone, now an even darker brown, like that. And then in the end we are actually going in with black as well. With all that shading going on, it's time to switch for some highlighting with a bright yellow and a dash of white in that color as well. Adding to our little nice warts and highlighting the edges just like that and then blend it out with the sponge. And as I said before, we are going in with a black here really deepen that mouth and make those teeth pop. To fade that black out we go back in with a rust tone and fade outwards from the black. And of course the exact same process around the eye sockets. Then it's stem time, nice little earthy green tone here. 
with a little bit of brown in it to match well with the orange. This nice base, continuing with a bit more of that green with a little less brown in. Building it up, then deepening everything with that black. And we extend those green tones downwards to connect the stem a little more with the rest of the pumpkin. Because after all, we don't want it to look like a glued on toilet paper roll. Extending brown there as well, deepening everything. And as mentioned in the tutorial overview, this paint job can take you either forever or in our case about 40 minutes to an hour to complete it. And that's what it looks like right now. Time to give it a layer of varnish to add a nice glossy texture to it. And of course it also helps to set all that color underneath. Next up, additional paint detailing. And first out is shading those warts. We need a nice brown base on them. And then going in with a brush to fade it out. We also go over it again with a thin layer of orange. Give back some of that saturation. And then it's time to flick on light, bright yellow tones for highlights. You can use watercolors here. Make sure that brush is wet and just flick on that paint. And this helps giving you a much more natural and organic color. Then we use that same brush to stipple on additional yellow just in the edges, like that. Sort of has the same effect as flicking it, but this is more precise. We also go in and do that with a dark tone for a nice natural shading. And right about now, we think our pumpkin is ready. Time to peel it off. And as usual, when removing a latex prosthetic like this, make sure you add ample amounts of flour or powder along the edges, both inside and outside, or that latex will stick to itself and ruin the whole thing. Peel it all off, give it a check, make sure you haven't got any clay with you there. Remove it if you do and go over it with powder or flour. We also trim the edges and then the tricky part with a tiny pair of scissors, we open up and cut up that mouth. We don't separate it completely, but we cut it really, really long up there on the jawline as well. But it's still gonna be one piece. Time for application, but first a little close up on that paint job and that texture. It's really awesome if you ask me. And there we got it. First off some Vaseline or oil and that hairline and on our brows just in case we get any latex there. We don't want that to stick in our hairs. Get that ball cap ready. Slide that over your nugget. And now it's always a good idea to actually just put on the mask without any latex, just to see where you need to paint black, because we need black in the eye sockets and where our mouth is. So now we know, and now we go in and fill that up with black. Since we are using a grease-based color here, it's kind of shiny, which is not good. This is gonna shine through there in the mouth, so we add black eyeshadow as well. Both to set that color, but also to matten it down, make it less glossy. Then we're back to latex. We're gonna use that to attach the mask to our head. Quite a lot of it. And then slide that mask on. Stretch it backwards, make sure those flappy latex pieces are stretched back. 
something like that. Go in and add additional latex on the edges to make sure they sit there. And then we have two steps left. We have a lot of white edges there from the inside of the mask. So we need to go in there and paint them black. Don't want them to show through. Going in with a the brush there. And we also extend the black color we have around our eyes out onto the mask. Giving us the illusion that everything is connected and that it's not a mask. And to make this pumpkin face really pop at the Halloween party, we add black on the rest of our face. We are using hairspray color here so that we can fade that black out onto the mask in a nice way. Then we figured what works well with an orange face? Well, purple color. So why not go get a purple jacket to match this up? And you are ready with your pumpkin face. Your pumpkin head, your Jack O Lantern horror version, or whatever you want to call it. We think this came out really, really awesome. We hope you think so too. And if you did, give it a thumbs up, share it with the world to help us keep this channel alive. And subscribe! We are back on Wednesday with another tutorial with about three mouths in it, I think. Hmm. See you then, take care, love you, bye.